Hey guys, how's it going? Justin here with Keystone Mountain Outdoors. So today what we're talking about is the Ruger American Predator. This one happens to be chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. So if you ever love 6.5 Creedmoor, we're gonna be doing a series of videos on this rifle. We're gonna build it out a little bit, maybe do some load development, test a couple different things on it. So yeah, this rifle, you guys are gonna see it a couple times. Today's video is just kind of gonna be a first impressions. I was gonna be an unboxing, but for whatever reason, my camera decided not to pick up any of the audio. And I didn't catch it till after I already installed the optic and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, so this is a 6.5 free more 22 inch uh, threaded barrel. It's a little bit of a heavier profile 6.5 free barrel. Uh, it does come with the factory Picatinny top rail installed, so you can screw on whatever optic you decide. Uh, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and take this thing out to the range. We'll shoot it a little bit, and then I'll come back and kind of talk a little bit more about the rifle, give you guys kind of my first impressions on it and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, so stay tuned. All right, guys, welcome back. So Ruger American 6.5 Creedmoor. We just got back from the range shooting a little bit. Now, one thing I do want to preface is I did take this rifle out and I shot it a couple different days and then I filmed kind of the intro and the outro of this video on the same day. So, but yeah, so we shot about 60 some rounds through this rifle. Now, one thing I do want to preface this rifle by saying is I'm not necessarily the best shot. I don't shoot precision a lot, but this rifle actually did impress me pretty good. Now, we shot some factory ammo through the rifle. I do plan on hand loading, but I didn't have any 6.5 Creedmoor brass, so I decided to buy a couple different uh, factory loads. Now, what we most put through it was 140 grain Nosler ballistic tips. These things shot pretty good. Uh, you'll see the results here in a minute. Uh, I also shot some Sierra Game King. This is HSM factory ammo loaded with the Sierra Game King 140s again. These shot pretty good, but probably what shot the best out of it no surprise is the 140 grain Hornady ELD match. I bought several different boxes of these. We shot about a box through it. And uh, man, this thing shoots pretty good. Shoots much better than I can shoot, honestly. So in taking a look at a, look at a target here, these are all shot at 100 yards. And like I said, I'm not the best shot and I definitely need practice with this rifle. Got to get used to the trigger a little bit. Shooting a little right still, a uh, little right, little right, little right, a uh, little right. I don't know what that was. Uh, this one was not me. I let somebody else shoot it. And then what I decided to do was make an adjustment. So I made an adjustment and it shot dead center there on that one. And then if we go over to the next target here. So this target here, I, these squares, I was aiming for the corners on them. So corner shot there. I was aiming for this corner. So pretty good. I was aiming for this corner. I think I might have pulled that one a little off. This right here is a four shot group. So you can see three are touching and one is about a half inch away. So that's a really, really good group. Uh, down here, I was aiming for this corner. And then right there, I was aiming for the upper right corner. So we shot this thing at 200 yards as well. And whenever we shot it at 200 yards, I was just shooting at steel. I didn't happen to go out there and take a picture of any of the groups. But this thing was shooting pretty consistently well at 200 yards. I moved it up 0.5 mils and, uh, or excuse me, I moved it up 0.2 mils, 0.2 or 0.3 mils. I can't remember what my correction was. I haven't wrote it down somewhere. But anyways, at 200 yards, it was shooting pretty dang good. It was pretty consistently uh, able to hit a three inch gong, pretty small gong at 200 yards. I was pretty impressed with the rifle. Like I said, I'm not necessarily the best shot by any means, uh, but this rifle, especially for the price point, seemed to impress me. I heard a lot of good things. I have a couple buddies that have these and uh, kind of swear by them because unless you really want to spend a good amount of money, it's tough to beat the Ruger American. For a rifle under $1,000, 
Uh, this thing will, will swing up there. I don't know if it's necessarily Tika level, but I would say that this thing would compete pretty well with like a Savage 110 or even some of the Howa 1500s. So it's actually a pretty good rifle for the money. And like I said, it's sub $400, 379 bucks is what I paid for this. And it's got a heavy profile barrel, 6.53 more, 22 inches. And it's factory threaded 5.8 24, which meant a lot to me because I only shoot suppressed anymore. Uh, as far as suppressors, I primarily ran my Dead Air Nomad. Now, the Nomad, we'll kind of do a different video, but it has this thing that screws in the end here. They call it an e-brake. It's supposed to give you a little bit better sound performance, and it'll also take a little bit of the recoil away. Now, 6.5 Creedmoor doesn't have a lot of recoil to begin with, and the suppressor takes away a good bit of the recoil, just in general, just the suppressor. But with the e-brake, man, this thing was lighter recoiling than a 223 an AR. So this thing shot really, really good with the suppressor and it seemed to be pretty accurate too. Um, now some stuff that I didn't like initially, whenever I took it out to the range, the trigger was a little bit on the heavier side. You can't adjust this trigger. You have to uh, pop the stock off and there's a set screw in the back here. You just loosen the set screw up and you can loosen it down. I think it's a three to five pound trigger. The lightest you could make it is three. I took it all the way down to the lightest and it seemed to seem to improve pretty good now I'll make sure we're empty all clear here but I'll show you guys the trigger on it so a little bit of take up but it is a pretty decent trigger now that I lightened it honestly I'm impressed with the rifle so far uh, the stock leaves a little bit to be desired it's a Ruger American stock if you felt one you felt them all they're a little bit flimsy it is free floated it does have a little bit of room so even if there is a little bit of flex in it it seems to uh, still stay free floated. So that's good. But yeah, everything about this rifle has seemed to impress me. The price point, you really can't beat it. Unless you're going to spend, you know, a thousand bucks on a Tika uh, to get one that's threaded from the factory. It's tough to beat this gun. If you don't care about the threads, you could get, you know, a regular Tika for around $750. And it'll shoot a little bit better than this probably. But then again, that's almost double the cost. You're talking $750. $800 for a Tika for just a base or base model Tika and this thing I mean it's factory threaded and it's sub $400 and it does have the detachable mag which is uh, kind of cool but yeah there seems to be a lot of aftermarket growing for these Ruger Americans because if you're somebody that wants just a solid shooting gun you don't plan on doing some ultra precision stuff with it if you just want a rifle that you could take out to the range and you could shoot pretty good groups with it, but you're not gonna sink thousands and thousands of dollars into it. I think that the Ruger American's a good option. It's also a good hunting rifle. I mean, this thing is plenty, plenty accurate for killing some deer or killing some elk and stuff like that, depending on your bullet and your caliber and all that stuff. Shot placement's most important in hunting situations. But yeah, honestly, this rifle impresses me a lot. I had a Ruger American in 22 250. It was the all weather one. It was like stainless steel barrel. That was a pretty good shooter as well. However, the 22 250, I liked it, but honestly, I liked shooting groundhogs and stuff like that with the 223. It was a little bit cheaper to shoot, so I kind of got rid of that rifle probably about five or six years ago or something. And this action feels pretty good. I don't remember my all weather stainless one having a, this smooth of an action. So I think Ruger's kind of quality control and attention to detail on these Americans has improved, which is honestly uh, a good thing. It's a, it's a very good thing. So as far as optics, I'm running the SWFA 10 by 42. This is the Super Sniper SWFA scope. So the military use these got use these scopes for a little bit. They're actually really good scopes, especially for the money. That's why I think it paired so well with this rifle. It's a straight 10 power scope, so you have no adjustment, but it does give you a, a decent field of view at the fixed 10 power. And what's so cool about the scope is that the turrets are spot on. So if you move this thing five clicks or whatever you move it, and you take it back to your zero, it returns to zero. Same thing with the windage. You can move these turrets all around and as long as you move them back to your zero stop that you set, it works pretty good. It doesn't have a hard zero stop, but if you're just moving it a little bit and then you get back to the zero, you could put a zero stop on the scope. There's different videos out there about it. But yeah, it's a fixed 10 power scope, so it's not necessarily the best, but for the money, this is like a $300 scope that the turrets actually work on. And the glass isn't too bad on it either. So it kind of fits pretty good with the Ruger American Predator because the American Predator is a good rifle that performs really well, especially for the price point. So as far as a total package, if you want to shoot, get into shooting a little bit longer range or get into shooting precision, 
and you want a caliber that still is going to pack a punch that you can hunt with and a gun that will, will be good to hunt with and good to shoot precision with on a budget this setup here is absolutely amazing if you want a good budget suppressor maybe get a yhm turbo or excuse me a yhm resonator uh, that would be a really great can and it would just be a really great budget hunting package so what can you guys look forward to next in seeing on this Ruger american predator honestly i don't know i don't know what i want to do to it initially i was thinking i was going to drop it in a chassis or something like that and i still may do that however i'm also looking at maybe the magpul hunter stock there's a couple different things i'm looking at for doing this the trigger i was thinking about upgrading it but once i lightened that trigger the trigger is honestly not bad especially for you know being a factory trigger i may end up cutting this barrel so this is a 22 inch factory threaded barrel i may cut it down to 16 just simply because i'm not going to shoot this thing out to extreme long ranges and my suppressor is like six and a half inches. And then with the with the e-brake, it's another inch. So it's like seven and a half inches. So by the time I screw that on the end of a 22 inch barrel, it gets pretty long. So I may end up chopping the barrel and shortening it just because I plan on using it suppressed and stuff like that. But who knows, maybe I won't do that for a while. But yeah, I'm definitely looking at getting a different stock for it. And I'm open to suggestions. Do you guys have one of these? Do you guys have any recommendations you guys would upgrade or any recommendations you would like me like to see me do to this rifle? Definitely open to suggestions, guys. Uh, so far, the rifle impresses me a lot, especially, like I said, for the money, sub $400 is a pretty dang good shooting rifle. 65 Freemore is a pretty good caliber. It seems to be relatively uh, readily available in the ammunition has definitely come down in cost. And then the SWFA 10 by 42 Super Sniper Scope on here. Man, this is a great scope and overall just a really, really great package, especially for the money that I got tied up in this thing. Just a solid, solid shooting gun and solid shooting combo in general. But yeah, guys, that's it for this video. If you guys have any comments, I'd love to hear them. Any feedback, I'd love to hear it. Definitely look forward to doing more stuff with this rifle. So this isn't going to be the last video you guys see on it. So guys, as always, remember to train hard, shoot fast, unless you're shooting precision, shoot accurately, and be safe. God bless.